If you shoot a lot of grease in that grease circ, you will push that bushing out and it'll try to push that sprocket off of that shaft. Hey guys, Larry the Tractor Guy here. Hey, it's uh, one o'clock in the afternoon here in Southwest Oklahoma and we're right up there around 95 degrees already, September 21st here and uh, man, uh, we're ready for a cool down. It's warming up. We've got an air drill to go look at for a customer that um, basically his rear meter drive has stopped turning for whatever reason. And so we're going to go out and check that out. I just stopped here at my house to take a break. I wanted you to check out this uh, this old tractor that I found and uh, purchased the other day. I know it's a red tractor, but it's kind of cool. And it's old and it's original. And from what I understand, it's never been into, it's never been touched as far as the engine. And it's pretty, it's pretty shrewd looking. It's got the old mag style um, distributor on it. And uh, what I found interesting was put a battery in this thing and hit the switch. The thing starts up and runs super, super cool. Drives good. Check this out. All the way low idle. Man, this thing just, it doesn't have a lot of compression. So it's a little bit hard to start. You really gotta spin it over to get it started. Well, listen to that thing run. It's got oil leaks. I mean, it's pretty rough. But man, I was surprised that put a battery in it and got the thing started and it ran as decent as it does. So we're gonna we're gonna restore this little H International tractor, and uh, it'll be a pretty fun project. We'll let you know how it turns out. So stay tuned. We're gonna go out and look at this. Look at this 1910 hydraulic drive air drill real quick. So we're out here at this 1910 hydraulic drive air cart with the rear tank that's not turning and looks like customer already pretty well figured out that the sprocket was turning on the meter shaft here. And so when that sprocket walked off, basically what it did was it walked the chain off of the uh, sprocket at the same time. And so Looks like it pushed the bushing out of the housing a little bit. And so we're gonna go ahead and uh, see what we can do here to fix this problem. And it looks like real quick, just to make note of this real quick, and I've seen this problem before. Um, now that I'm looking at this, got my eyes on it. Um, it looks like they probably greased that grease circ right there. If you can see them point at it there, that grease circ. And if you shoot a lot of grease in that grease circ, you will push that bushing out and it'll try to push that sprocket off of that shaft. So keep that in mind that if you look in your operator's manual, that calls for about two shots of grease uh, seasonally, okay? So it doesn't take too much grease and that can get over greased really quick, okay? Especially if you have a battery powered grease gun or something like that. So. Uh, makes it kind of a problem to put that back together, but we're gonna clean that up see if we can get his Sprocket put back in place and I don't know if they Lost the key here, but we'll check that out here in a minute. So we had to shut the tank cutoffs off here by moving these two levers up and then we turned the meter by hand to Empty the meter to make sure it was turned off Okay, and so I don't know if you can see but up inside of that meter housing it also pushed the shaft and the drive and the bushing out from the inside okay so we're gonna have to drive that back in and get that bushing back in place so i've got a long got a long rod here that i've made in the past to do that with works pretty good okay guys so you can see how much grease came out of there i removed that zerk and basically drove those bushings back up in the housing where they're supposed to be and so we'll go ahead and put the sprocket on real quick and get that set back like it's supposed to be. We got the sprocket installed and one quick reminder when you're looking at that, um, you can see the shaft is flush with the end of the sprocket there. That's a pretty quick way to check that. And probably a pretty good idea to go ahead and check those Allen screws on those sprockets yearly. But remember two shots of grease on that Zerk on these bushings on this meter drive, okay? 
and uh, that's a pretty good idea to not over grease that something else that i'll make mention real quick is one of the problems here is that if that chain breaks or comes off um the computer doesn't know that because it's reading the speed here on the end of this hydraulic drive shaft okay and so the monitor thinks that it's still planting okay so one quick way to check that is to turn the meters with the switch on the other side so we're going to look into that because the customer says that the switch is not working and then also a uh, quick reminder too and i'll show you up on the display here in a minute uh, we may need to change the the sensitivity setting on the blockage because basically if the sensitivity is set right on the drill it should detect whether or not the front or rear tank is not sewing okay so we're going to look at that in a minute too and uh, make sure that that's set right the reason that would get changed in the display is maybe if you were planning a really really um a really low rate and uh you want your blockage to work good you've got to change that sensitivity setting or you don't know if you have a blockage so uh, we're going to check that setting in the display we're looking at the blockage page when i was talking earlier about the sensitivity of the blockage probably would have detected that his rear tank was not planning um, when it was actually not turning okay and uh, so if we go to our main blockage page it's going to look like this okay and then we're going to go down here and hit h over here no not h i'm sorry we're going to hit g okay and then we're looking at roll fail rate and it's set right now for two seeds per second okay probably the reason it was set for that is because he sewed milo the last time with this drill at a low rate and so we didn't want alarms going off all the time telling him that he's got a blockage so now that we're planting wheat and uh, we're doing 70 pounds we want to go ahead and change that and we're putting fertilizer down too so we're going to go ahead and set it for 20 seeds per second okay that's really looking at it really really close so probably would have detected that the rear tank wasn't planting okay guys we got them up and going and checked everything out everything's turning like it's supposed to got this customer back in the field planting wheat it's pretty dry man we've got dry conditions and uh we're kind of hoping to get a little rain and it's super hot 97 degrees this afternoon it's pretty it's pretty crazy to be this hot but We've got to get wheat in the ground if we want wheat pasture. There he goes. Try to do everything it's supposed to. Quick recap on the 1910 air drill that the rear tank was not planting wheat and luckily the customer came out here on his uh, side by side and and drove beside the drill and seen that the meter wasn't turning because the operator never knew because it was showing a rate on the display um, because like I said earlier that speed sensor is connected to the end of that hydraulic motor drive and not necessarily to the seed meter itself. And so when the chain came off, it still thought that it was turning that meter. Um, if we would have had the seed sensitivity on his blockage set up to see 20 seeds every second, then it would have detected that, that rear meter, or it would have detected a blockage basically, and it would have forced the operator to shut the machine down and and go see what's going on and then of course he probably would have found that that meter was not turning um so long story short is the the operator had greased the air seeder and greased those meter shaft bushings and evidently pumped a lot of grease in that rear meter bushing which in turn built enough pressure up between those bushings that it 
essentially pushed the sprocket off of the end of the shaft that turns the meter and pushed the sprocket off. So the meter was no long, longer turning, the sprocket was out of line, threw the chain off, and then that's pretty much what caused his problem. Okay, so keep in mind um, when you're changing um, to your higher seating rates um, to go ahead and check that sensitivity on your blockage on these Seed Star 2 drills because um, you want to make sure that it's giving you an alarm if that thing's not planning what it's supposed to be planning, okay? And so keep that in mind when you're looking your drill over and getting ready for uh, wheat season after you've been planting milo or planting lower rates that we need to go in and correct that blockage. And then also keep in mind to only apply, you know, two, three, four shots of grease to those bushings, okay? And so I appreciate you guys watching the videos, getting a lot of videos on on drills and got a lot of videos out there on tractors and sprayers and appreciate you guys watching and uh, Larry the Tractor Guy signing out. Hey guys, check out Larry the Tractor Guy videos here, other videos here, subscribe here, and buy all your John Deere parts here. We'll make it work. I think we're gonna have to make it. We'll make it work. Come on, let's go. We need to make you need some bloopers. Y'all already, already, already burning me out. Some bloopers. He's sitting in a sun over here, man.